a big change is coming to the DC TV universe. We've got a rad casting announcement for James Gunn's upcoming Suicide Squad film, and another late to the party game developer may be tossing their hat into the Battle Royale ring. All of these stories and more on this episode of Looter News. Happy Friday, everybody. It is March 8th, 2019, and this is Looter News, your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek gaming and pop culture. I am your host, Josh Ball. Let's get into the news, shall we? Suicide Squad, the first film which received mixed reviews but grossed over $740 million worldwide, had a very uncertain future with the way things were going in the DC movie universe at the time. Then in 2018, seemingly out of nowhere, it was announced that James Gunn himself was penning a script for a sequel. The last news that we brought to you about the film was that not only was Gunn writing and directing it, but that the cast would be different and likely only have a couple of familiar faces. This week, however, we got a couple of new pieces of casting news that cleared that right up. Starting up with, first off, which is that Will Smith will not be returning to the film and had to bail on it due to existing scheduling conflicts. Sad news indeed, seeing as his portrayal of Deadshot in the first film was definitely a fun one. No worries though, because Deadshot is sticking around and will be played by none other than Heimdall himself, Idris Elba. The announcement was quite a bit of an exciting one and received a lot of fan applause because if there's anyone who could make an interesting Deadshot in place of the Fresh Prince, it's certainly the man who's the fan for runner to play James Bond. In addition to Elba as Deadshot, Margot Robbie is expected to return as Harley Quinn, though no announcement on that has been made official just yet. The second piece of Suicide Squad cast news that hit this week is a much more interesting or weird bit of news depending on how you look at it. It seems that the rest of the Suicide Squad we knew outside of Harley and Deadshot might not be in the new film at all, and instead Deadshot will be leading a ragtag new team consisting of, wait for it, Rat Catcher, King Shark, Polka Dot Man, and Peacemaker. Yeah, they reached deep on some of these for sure. King Shark being a more notable and well-known of the DC villains than the others. Additionally, it sounds like Gunn is trying to get Dave Batista in for the role of Peacemaker. It's a bit of a random cast of characters for sure, but if there's anyone who can make some of DC's lesser known villains work on screen, it's the guy who got audiences to fall in love with a previously lesser known talking raccoon and his happy tree friend. Second story this week is a slightly somber one, also a much anticipated one, because I know that you've all been waiting for me to talk about it. And it's the end of an era. Yesterday, the CW announced that season eight of Arrow would be shortened to 10 episodes and would be the final season. This is certainly a big deal for DC TV fans as Arrow was the catalyst behind the current slate of DC TV shows, none of which would likely be around without Arrow originally paving the way for them. Shows which include The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Black Lightning, as well as the crossover specials that were created because of them, hence the coining of the overall term, the Arrowverse. Speaking of crossovers, the shortening of next season to 10 episodes is an interesting move, as that would line up very close to the time when next year's Arrowverse crossover, Crisis on Infinite Earths, would happen. For those of you that caught this year's Elseworld, World's crossover, you know that Stephen Amell's Oliver Queen made some sort of deal with the being known as the Monitor to save the lives of Flash and Supergirl, a deal that we, as the audience, likely won't know the full extent of until next year's crossover event. Additionally, this season of Arrow has been featuring Flash forward looks into the future where we've yet to see Oliver in any way, shape, or form, all fueling speculation that Oliver's deal with the Monitor may mean paying some dire consequences in the next season's crossover. Over. That being said, executive producer Mark Guggenheim has said that part of the reason for bringing Arrow to an end is that they would like to make room for more DC shows to potentially make the DC TV universe go on as long as possible. One of those shows that we've already seen is Ruby Rose's Batwoman during this season's crossover, who will now have her own show next season. And ideally, over time, other DC shows may be wrapped up in order to extend the DC TV universe by bringing on more shows and more characters. But we do have have to say farewell arrow you had a good run for our next story do you remember a few months back when we gave you a first look at images of sonic that had been released from the poster of the new sonic the hedgehog movie yeah we're still having nightmares of the image as well 
And we weren't the only ones, as many fans became very vocal online about the new look, his big, hairy, weird, muscular legs being one of the most strange, most disturbing, and most talked about issues with the poster that was revealed this week. However, thanks to some new leaked promo images, we got our first real look at what Sonic will actually look like in the upcoming Sonic movie, and... Well, many fans are just as upset all over again, some even more so than before. I'm not even sure what fans are expecting anymore. He does, in fact, look like a silly blue cartoon hedgehog, but this may just be one of those characters that doesn't transfer over to the real world in any way that won't look super weird in some way. The story for the movie is said to be a, quote, hedgehog out of water, end quote, kind of story when Sonic, voiced by Jean Ralpho himself, Ben Schwartz, finds himself in our present day world and develops a relationship with James Marsden's Tom Wachowski, while also finding himself at odds, of course, with the evil Dr. Robotnik, who will be played by Jim Carrey. I love that Jim Carrey casting, by the way. And as expected, mayhem ensues. You know, that old Sonic chestnut. It's a shame that, so that the Sonic guys don't have some of the Pokemon people to help them out, because Detective Pikachu definitely looks pretty decent in modern day from the recent trailers. We're gonna see how the final product shakes out, though, when Sonic the Hedgehog hits theaters just before Thanksgiving on November 8, 2019. We're talking about what could be the next unexpected game developer to throw their hat into the Battle Royale ring. We've been surprised by some entries in the genre at this point, most notably with the recent Battle Royale adjacent Tetris 99. But it appears there are at least some interest from Hideteka Miyazaki. Miyazaki, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is an iconic game designer and the president of From Software, the makers of the hardcore Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and the upcoming Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. The idea of a Dark Souls or Bloodborne-esque Battle Royale already has me super stoked, even if this idea is really early in its infancy. In an interview this week, Miyazaki spoke on the potential of FromSoft getting involved in the Battle Royale genre, saying, these games are definitely fun. If we did it, it might be a bit different, but we're definitely interested and there's definitely that possibility in the future. We'd love to take a crack at them. But it was another quote later on in that interview that I found the most interesting from Miyazaki, where he said, quote, we do need diversity in this this industry. Regardless of what From Software is doing, we need people making Battle Royale games and live services, and we need people making single-player focused experiences. We feel that this diversity is what will keep everyone going. Now, while I'm super amped for the regularly scheduled From Software programming, namely the aforementioned Sekiro, which launches on March 22nd, I am very intrigued by the prospect of a From Software Battle Royale in the future, but time will tell if anything materializes there. Now, while we're on the subject of Battle Royales, let's talk about the next big name title throwing their hat in the ring. And of course, I'm talking about Clifford's Big Red Battle Royale, you guys. Clifford runs around. Emily Elizabeth is there. It's great. I'm kidding, of course, because we're talking about Battlefield 5's Firestorm Battle Royale, but mad props to Chris Darbro for whipping up that image on short notice. Anyway, Battlefield 5 had a reveal leaked online this week that showcased some of the gameplay elements that we can expect from the newest addition to the Battle Royale lineup, most of which are pretty common within the genre at this point, with a few notable exceptions, including the ability to fire your sidearm when you're downed, which brings with it some interesting gameplay implications in the same way that Apex Legends allowed you to res people that had previously been knocked out. Now, aside from that, Firestorm will bring along with it the typical things that we expect from your average battle royale. Parachuting in, gathering up weapons and ammunition, and taking aim to be the last person or team standing as Firestorm will support singles, duos, and four-person squads at launch. Players are not only standing against other players, of course, but they're also avoiding being overtaken by the storm of fire. See what I did there? That's closing in on them, shrinking the playable map. And speaking of the playable map, there's going to be a lot more to interact with than your average Battle Royale, as Battlefield 5's Firestorm will include the franchise's trademark destructible environments as well. Now, there's no telling how EA and Battlefield's Firestorm is going to fit into the overall Battle Royale scene, but the spring release for Firestorm should be right around the corner, so we're not going to have to wait too long to find out. For our final gaming story of the week, we're talking about Nintendo throwing its hat into the virtual reality world with the return of the Virtual Boy. Ha! <laughs> 
Just kidding. We're actually talking about the latest improvements to Nintendo's Labo DIY accessories that basically will turn it into your very own VR kit. Nintendo's Labo was launched in April of last year, and while it has released a handful of new kits and initiatives to get the DIY kits in schools, for example, Nintendo has stated that they believe the best is still to come for Labo. Incoming Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser said in a statement this week, quote, we wanted to design an experience that encourages both virtual and real world interactions among players through passing around Toy-Con creation. Now, as the, was the case with previous Labo sets, the new VR kits have a variety of options to choose from, starting with the main kit, which costs $79.99 and includes six different cardboard kits to create, your very own VR goggles, a blaster, a camera, and an elephant, of course. That last one caught me by surprise, and I can't wait to see how the ridiculousness of the elephant in the Labo room turns out. You can also purchase a basic starter kit that includes just the goggles and blaster for $39.99, which will likely be the perfect option for folks that already have the OG Labo set already. All you Nintendo VR fans can rejoice too, because we only have to wait a month to get our hands on this as the VR kits, kits are set to go on sale April 12th. And that's going to do it for our show this week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you enjoyed this week's episode, be sure to share it with your friends, family, or anyone who's a fan of geek gaming and pop culture news, or just a fan of Loot Crate in general. Additionally, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Loot Crate to see all the fun content that we do there. You can also follow us on Twitch and Mixer at twitch.tv slash Loot Crate, mixer.com slash Loot Crate, respectively, to know when we go live for our gaming streams and other fun events and giveaways that we do there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Josh Ball. I'm going to go throw this teleprompter in the trash. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Shaboy!